Hi folks, welcome to Milterra. Why are we here? Milterra is actually the sister company to Camplete. And Camplete is a software company that we've gotten to know over the past year as we've started to look at more five axis machining centers. Camplete is one of the leaders in offering five axis simulation, verification, and to help handle programming five axis parts with different CAM software, merging those CAM all together. But today we're gonna to focus on the manufacturing side. Let's go take a tour of Milterra. Not a huge shop, but a lot of machines and even more automation. Look at this, Fanuc robot feeding a George Fisher or GF Micron, super, super high-end five axis machine. Really, really solid machine able to do automation with palletized systems that can pull in workflows and handle scheduling based on tooling, based on demands. Very, very cool. And within that same cell is a shop qualified Zeiss CMM, 100% inspection on the work that they do. Just amazing. Here is that sort of cell and the interface so they've got RFID tags in the pallets, and you've got some screens up here that can show the jobs, future scheduling stuff. And this is what I was mentioning where it's forward looking. So it knows if it's going to run out of, uh, of say a tool light proactively, it can tell you where, and, and you can react now uh, proactively, and again, instead of reactively. Mazak Turning Center. Really cool, multi-stage, clean system. Ultrasonic moves to a rinse, moves to a rinse, moves to a dry. I'm starting to understand how important those are. Um, I hate to think that we're gonna need one soon, uh, but something better than how we're doing it now. Lots of cooling systems and stuff that are removed from the machine tools because thermal expansion and thermal stability are so important. So they will have these machines set up First of all, lots of automation, but let's say a machine is not working, they'll have it immediately move into a warm-up routine. It'll keep the coolant on, or at least on at certain segments. It'll keep the spindle on or warm, keep the machine motion moving, so you never go cold. It makes so much sense when you think about it. Micron 450, a really nice machine. Heidenheim Control, doing lots and lots of really cool five-axis work. And it's really cool when you start to understand how many applications will have parts like this in it. You know, it's not just the Audi A4 with the turbocharged engine, but all sorts of different compressors and industrial uses, aerospace, absolutely beautiful. Some amazing tolerances, uh, not just from what you see here, but also think about the high RPMs uh, on products like these mean the ID is insane. What they've got to do to hold certain tolerances of circularity and taper. Uh, they were talking and sharing some of the numbers and it's, uh, it's very, very respectable. So let's see here, six pallet system, parts like this, under an hour, but still a lot of work to do. And it's not just getting the material off there, it's controlling the flow lines of the tool paths themselves. That's what's really uh, impressive. What I mean by that is it's not just getting the material removed from the part, but they actually want to control the way the toolpath looks when the part is finished and how it is interacting with that material and how the flow of that is in the surface finish. So it starts actually as a forging and that has a lot to do with some really important things about the grain structure uh, and strength of the material. They turn it down to this shape and I think when they turn it a lot of the important ID work happens. This is maybe what you would see in like a six cylinder engine. They're a lot smaller than I thought and so the idea with this shape is to just efficiently catch the air and spool at these insane high RPMs. Yep. Maybe hundreds of thousands of RPMs. Could be yeah, 200, 250,000 RPM. Amazing. And the uh, turbocharged, I mean those things will last for a long time, the life of the vehicle. Baby. For sure, yep. Wow. What you're looking at here is a four station ultrasonic semi-automated cleaning solution. Basically, get the parts off the machine, get the coolant off of them, get the fingerprints, grease, anything else, and end up with a pristine shippable part. Nakamura twin spindle, twin turret lathe, and another, okay, so this is the back end of a, what is it, an 800? HPM 800. HPM 800 micron, so a much larger machine. Uh, you can see the fixturing and palletized system back here. We walk around. I don't think this machine is on at the moment, but you can get a sense for it being a much larger uh, machine, much larger work envelope. 
Um, we'll put in 800 millimeters equivalent, but I think it's about 30 some inches. And last but certainly not least, the Matsura MAM 7235V PC32. I've actually gotten pretty good at saying that. Um, they were just saying this is a phenomenal workhorse production machine. It just runs. It runs incredibly well, runs incredibly accurately. It's incredibly stable. And we've mentioned it a bunch of times before, but the footprint of this machine, the capabilities, the number of pallets, the number of tool holders, uh, it's just really impressive. The relatively small number of tools, uh, again, given compared to what a lot of people are using a man for. One last machine, actually, this has Grimsmo written all over it. EDM, wire EDM. Take card here to the video where we toured uh, Nicholas Hacko Watchmaker. We were looking at the Makino EDM and kind of showing how they work, but really, really cool machines. And we've actually seen some cells before that can tie in milling machines with EDMs with CMM, so you can mill apart, EDM it, and then QC it all within one workflow. That's cool. Look at that end mill. Tiny, another tiny one. Folks, LX160. I've actually seen a number of these machines, but never with the 91 pallet integrated automation system, which is freaking awesome. One of the things to think about is when you start talking about shop metrics on a profitability per square foot, this is awesome. Really compact footprint, really amazing machine. You guys are running this lights out production. Yeah, this machine screams. I think these usually ship with a 46,000 RPM spindle, five axis, linear motor. We'll put a card here to the other videos we've done on the LXs, but really awesome probing system right there. Although, you know what's cool is we all the LXs that we've seen have been in sort of showroom or demo worlds. This is the first time I've actually seen one out in the wild. That's pretty, pretty exciting. I literally think Matsura made this light to make it absolutely impossible to film it. <laughs> like normally you can like work your angle yeah. around to change it. No. Touch off the tool. The speed and the motion that these machines run at is just mesmerizing. If you've seen five axis machines, it's cool, it's great. Some of them are fast. This takes it to a whole nother level. Look at the footage here from that Connecticut demo where they were running. I think these were golf divot marker tools. It's, this is not sped up. This is amazing. Look at the machine without lights on. So the phrase lights out machining generally means you're running the machines at night or unattended or no one's even at the shop. But what's funny is you really don't need any lights, but there's something surreal about walking up to a CNC machine and it's pitch black uh, because we want to see what's happening, but the machine doesn't care. It doesn't need any light. One of the things I'm starting to understand about what they do here is it's not just the software, it's not just the machine, it's kind of rethinking the whole manufacturing workflow. And it's, you know, for example, instead of using existing tools to make, sort of adapt those to the part or the workflow, let's, let's, let's create things from scratch. Let's reinvent the wheel. Let's stop thinking about the limitations. Things like 100% inspection because they can. And because nowadays with the new technology, um, subject to real estate and financial constraints, you can inspect 100% of everything you do. You know, putting tools in, not as just a tool, but the whole stack of the stick out, the collet, the holder, the gauge length, it, it makes so much sense when you think about it. Um, things like having automation cells where workflows are driven based on customer demand, based on sales numbers, and you know, things like looking at workflows that show, I can run the next 22 parts, but then it's forward-looking tool management, which is so much better than kind of rearward-looking tool of life management, which tells you reactively when you violated a tool life condition, said, let's say proactively, here's where you're gonna get, now you can decide whether you want to adjust for that. It's amazing. Smallest tool changer option, uh, largest pallet. Now that's a little bit, you know, they're not a traditional job shop where they're seeing lots of different types of parts. So you can see here, they've got either barrel cutters or circle, what are they called, circle segment cutters? Um, they're very specific to making five axis forms. Some traditional end mills, thread mills, um, you know, three eighths or half inch is huge uh, for this machine and frankly for a lot of what they do here.
So checking tools both before the, they're used and after they're used, uh, which again, starts to make sense. I don't wanna use a tool that's broken and I don't want to put it away and keep machining apart if that tool broke while I was making the part. Didn't like that. Didn't like the tool, I guess. Yeah. Otherwise, I can't think of why it would have. So oh, there you go. There. Look at that. We were we were running slow before at 18,000 RPMs. Luckily, we've picked the pace up now to 42,499 RPMs. Unbelievable. This is a tool you made. Is that, is that what you're saying? This is a tool you ground? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So this is a shunk product that is not a traditional vise. This is your vise screw, but instead of it actually acting on a turned screw, it's actually an hydraulic cylinder. And you said this is 40, 40 kilonewtons. kilonewtons, which is yeah, which a lot. Yeah, which you control. You can adjust this <laughs> oh my gosh. piston inside here and right. control the clamping force. But those serrated jaws will actually grip into a material, even like Inconel. So unlike some of the other systems where you have to pre-stamp uh, the part, this just takes care of it all. It's nice and tall to lift your part off up, so you got access to it. That's really cool. One of the things that I took away from touring was really just the idea of this entrepreneurial story. They started out not all that long ago focused on writing software to make a very specific process for improving and machining auto parts, turbochargers. And that turned into software with additional capabilities for verification and for handling post-processing. Then they wanted to do more testing in-house and they had more demand from outside customers to both deliver turnkey solutions, but also to produce that first batch of say 50 or 500 parts before they kind of handed it over. So they ended up machining more, and then that has grown, and then that has grown into getting into customized cutters to perform really, really specific applications for different materials, different applications, and different part geometries, which has led them to now expand into tool grinding. And we're very much in the middle of this story, but we really appreciate them giving us the insight, and it's really great to get to know them. And they embody, I think, one of the best things about entrepreneurship, which is not just with the product that you sell, but it's the team of people, both your internal organization as well as the partners in industry that really help you grow and achieve a mission.